8-0, uh, you, you started out a, a couple tough ones, but uh, boy, Horizon League, you really got some things rolling here. 8-0, what's, what are you doing well? What do you like from, from your guys um, during this winning streak? Well, we're just playing, uh, you know, the style of basketball that fits uh, our personnel. And I think most importantly, we're playing very unselfish uh, on both ends of the floor. Uh, defensively, we're obviously igniting some things and getting getting momentum going. But our guys just love to play with each other. Um, and, and we've gotten better since the very beginning. As you know, our non-conference has been cut short compared to years past. And most young teams need a little bit of time, a little bit of game experiences to galvanize the team effort and obviously get to know each other. So it's been wonderful, and I'm, I'm enjoying it, and my staff is doing a wonderful job as well. You mentioned the defense. Uh, giving up under 64 points a game in the Horizon League, you're averaging over seven steals a game. Tell me a little bit about uh, what you want that mindset defensively to be. Well, it's, it's, it's built on toughness. There's no doubt about it. Our, our young men... Uh, each have a unique story that that molds their personality into what it is and ultimately it fits the style of and the brand of basketball uh, that's very exciting uh, to play and all and, and all they're doing is is executing and being in the right spots uh, there's a system in place we grade out every game every possession and our young men I'll tell you one thing the resilience and the resolve that they're showing is just a byproduct of our leadership on campus. Uh, President Sands, uh, Scott Garrett, and obviously uh, have done a great job during this pandemic and preparing our not just our team, but uh, the entire department and, and university. Now, the Horizon League changed things up because of the pandemic to cut down on travel. So you go and you play a, a team in your, in your league and you play them on a Saturday and a Sunday or a, 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 or a Friday and a Saturday, so you're playing them back-to-back -back at their place. How much of a challenge is that, that you get two games in the course of a weekend against a conference opponent? Well, it's different in several ways, but also similar. Uh, the preseason in the past, you have MTE tournaments where you play back-to-back, -back, and obviously in conference tournament formats in postseason, you play back-to-back. -back. It's just not against the same team. So the added element uh, is definitely that first game. That first game is built off the scouting report, everything else. And then once two teams get to know each other, you, you throw those things out and the true character of your team is, will show up. And that's what that second game, uh, it, that's what it shows. That's what it reveals to us all. Given that, you have to be real proud of the way your guys uh, coming off an overtime win in one of those back-to-back -back second games against Northern Kentucky. How big was that? Well, that first game, uh, you know, we knew that going into the series that Northern Kentucky, you know, they were the champions in our postseason tournament, representatives of the NCAA tournament, if there was one. And they had championship DNA all over them. Um, we wanted to obviously get out there and set the tone early. And I thought our guys played together uh, and, and the score indicated such. But that second game was very tough. We knew that the Northern Kentucky championship version was going to show up and we, we went into overtime, but I'll tell you one thing that overtime builds, builds character. It builds championships. And obviously we're happy that we came out on top as it will uh, continue to guide us throughout the year. Getting ready.